And welcome back to this exciting tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at using Blender to create a, a city scene with a particle generator and uh, trying to imitate something that looks like it's from the Blade Runner universe. Let's do it. All right, so here we are. Um, I've got these images up. These are taken from the, the Blade Runner films. We've got uh, this one here from the most recent, and then the uh, these here from from the classic. Uh, very, very high quality JPEGs here. Uh, we can do a tutorial on how to render out images that look this great at another point in time. But right now, uh, we're just taking a look at it for reference. So uh, these are the models that were used uh, from the, the first film. And uh, you can see they're, they're pretty cool. They, they, this is what we're gonna imitate, it's sort of these blocky uh, city structures, different uh, towers and just random bits. And uh, we're going to try and use the uh, the land, um, the atmosphere. Sorry, where'd it go? This kind of a look as well, like the lights and stuff. But I want to bring it into the daytime and, and add this sort of orange uh, dust storm look. I think it's pretty cool. Reminds me of my home, Australia, where we get these crazy red dust, dust storms that blow in from, from the outback and cover Sydney and make everything look like the world's ending. It's pretty spectacular. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, get your camera out. All right, cool. So let's jump into Blender. This is Blender 2.81. So the exciting new version that's just released. If you're watching this, uh, you know, fairly close to when I'm making it, it's brand new. But uh, if you're watching this in like 2030, yeah, I hope you're using a new version. Anyways, let's uh, get started. So we'll start off uh, deleting everything. And uh, let's get a plane into our scene. This is going to be the base of our city. And let's get a camera. It's kind of silly. We just deleted a camera uh, and now we're making a new one, but old habits die hard. I'll jump onto the view here, click on lock camera to view, and I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to widen up my camera's um, field of view. So let's try, we'll try 24 to start. And I want to get it into a 235 anamorphic style frame size. So to do that, I need to get my trusty calculator out. And uh, I'm going to multiply. I want to keep 1080. So we'll keep the height at 1080. So 1080 multiplied by 2.35. Boom. 2538. That's the number I want. So 2538. Now we have a movie. That's how easy it is to make a movie, by the way. Okay, um, we'll keep it at 24 frames a second, again, because that's the cinematic standard and I think it looks nice. Um, and let's let's scale this up um, even more. And I'll grab it on the X uh, value and just drag it forward. So we're really just taking advantage of uh, our frame. And I might scale it on the Y a little bit, just so we don't have those corners. That's pretty good. All right, I'm hit tab to jump into the object and we are going to subdivide. I've already got it typed there. And then we got pretty, that's handy. Anyways, you type subdivide to get to it. And we're going to pull the little box that's down here and I'm going to increase the number of cuts up to 10. That's fine. And I want to, let's see, let's undo lock to camera to view and uh, let's jump up to here. I want to have like a, a trench that kind of kind of moves through the scene. Um, but we might need more subdivisions for that. So let's let's just subdivide one more time. That should be enough. And let's jump back into our view. And I'm going to hit C to get my brush selection tool. If you use the, the roller on the mouse wheel, um, you can use that to select. Oh, I need to make sure I've got faces. And one thing that's annoying, when you have this, this brush select thing on, you can't actually like interact with anything else until you hit escape. So that can hang you up if you're not used to it. Okay, so we're back to phases and I'm just gonna select these and I might send it off this way uh, like that maybe and maybe do one that goes off. Wow, that's that's way too much. Uh, hold down shift to get rid of get rid of bits. I'll hit escape, pull out of it and jump out of the camera. And let's do one like this. I might make it a bit smaller. Uh, one this way, and maybe just like a random one there, and a random one over here, connect it up. Cool. All right, jump back into our camera. See, again, I hit zero, but I'm in brush mode. I hate that. Okay, 
Now let's hit E to extrude and G to grab and Z to restrict it to the Z plane. And I'm gonna drag all of these guys down. Some of these might be interesting if we go up instead. So no, okay. my, uh, my middle mouse button, I need to get a new mouse. It's sticking. So like every now and then I just kind of like totally will lose control. And you know, that's, that's gonna be annoying for you, but I'm hoping you're not gonna notice. All right, uh, G and Z, bring it up. Jump back into our view. I guess we're not really gonna see that, are we? It's, unless we go wider. And I'll do maybe one of these. I'm just gonna extrude this and um, bring it up like that. I grab a few others, grab it up. Just so we've got like tiny variations. Again, I'm not making towers like this yet. Um, this is this is what this is the surface that we're going to be uh, putting our particle system on. So, all right, that's cool. That's a great start. Okay, so next thing we need to do is uh, create some of these little city squares. Um, so to do that, let's get organized. I'm going to rename my plane to uh, city base, and I'm going to put it in a, a new collection called. Uh, which we call this, I'll call it city. And I will create another one here called, um, which we call this uh, city tiles. Okay, now in city tiles, we can go ahead and I'm gonna hide the city. Uh, and in city tiles, we're going to make um, a couple of um, little miniature, little miniature city blocks, basically. Um, if you remember in that, that photo of the model, where is it? Um, there, these like little square things, um, they've got lots, lots of nice little intricate detail. And there's a couple of repeating shapes. Um, this will be what we do to you know build up our build up our city. So let's let's subdivide this. Um, actually, you know what? We could be even quicker with this if I jump out of edit mode and um, what we can do is I'm just going to create some cubes, I'll scale this down and um, grab on the X and I'll just, what I'll do is we'll just, we'll just create a bunch of these guys. Oh, even better. Sorry. I just had a brainwave. We could, we could use a particle system on top of a particle system. This is genius. Uh, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little mini generator. So let's, let's delete that. And we'll delete that. And uh, let's let's select the little object that we've created. Let's go over to particles. We're going to create a new particle system. And this one we're going to call uh, city block generator. Just go with gen. And I want to produce it on the yeah the face. Face is cool. Um, and I want to do do it all at once. So usually frame start will be the frame where it begins to emit. And then frame end is the frame it stops emitting. And then you, how many, the thousand here is sort of spread out over this whole period of time. So we're creating particles that are kind of, you know, uh, flying all over the place uh, for that period of time. But I want a mold to generate right at the start. Uh, so I could say frame, frame start zero and frame in one. And what we're going to get with that is basically a thousand particles in one hit. Okay, let's turn off gravity and everything. So physics, I'm gonna say, um, where's gravity again? I can never remember where all these things live. Um, velocity, well, I'm gonna turn off velocity. So we don't need any velocity. It's not gonna be shooting them out at all. Um, and I could just say no physics. Yeah, that'll do it. And what we're gonna do is let's create uh, another cube. And I'll grab it on the Y over here. And we'll just leave it like that for now. We're gonna make this our particle. So if we go down back to this object, go down to render, and where it says halo, we're gonna select object. And we're gonna select this object. So we can do that a couple of ways. We can just eyedropper it in. You can also uh, find it up here and drag and drop the name. And that's gonna create all these little cubes on our on our surface here. Now let's uh, let's start changing things up. I'm gonna change the scale randomness. I'm gonna max that out. And I'm gonna make my scale bigger. 
and I'm going to decrease the number of particles. So you can see we can use this to kind of like use it like a tool to sort of manufacture a bunch of random different city blocks. Um, so now if we change anything to this, it's going to affect all of these guys. So um, what we could do is, um, well, for one thing, we could bevel this. So uh, just bring up our bevel and bevel it a little bit like that. And then maybe uh, let's extrude the top and scale it down and then extrude and grab it up. So we're getting these cool little tower things. Um, and let's scale it down again. All right, so that's nice. Um, and you know, we can create a couple of different buildings. So if I shift D on that and grab it over here, and then let's say go to our transparent mode and box select all of those and grab that down and then maybe extrude this one out on the X um, and then uh, grab that up. We've got a totally different object. And then um, what we can do is we can, we can put both of these into, um, let's create another collection We'll call this buildings and we'll grab this one. We'll call this uh, building one and building and both of these guys, we'll put them into this, this collection. And then what we could do is on our plane where we have the building itself selected, we can, uh, instead of using uh, the object, we can actually switch to collection and then we can select buildings as the collection. And now it's going to use all of them. So that's, you know, that's really cool. So we can create a couple of these. And as long as they're in this collection, um, then actually, uh, then they'll just continue to continue to add into our system. So you can see it already updating over here. So let's uh, scale this one maybe on the Z, scale it up, create some like platform things. Um, and then, uh, and then maybe let's see, let's uh, create another one. Um, might do a variation of this one. Grab it on the Y, bring it out, and just keep stacking these out. That's pretty cool. All right. Oh, little mouse button. Uh, let's, if we increase the count of these up, they'll really start overlapping and stuff, and we're going to get just a ton of uh, cool little cool little interactions like that. Okay, so all right, so here's my idea. So what we can do is we can take the this is the city tiles. Um, we'll call this one our generator. What we can do now is we can iterate we're using the seed. Uh, so we can iterate on the seed to create all these different variations of these buildings. So um, the more of these that make, we make, the more they'll just continue to add in to this. So um, I'm going to make a couple of more of these, just some random shapes and sizes. And then um, what I'll do is I'll then show you how we can iterate um, more of this. So uh, just give me a moment and I'll jump into it. Oh, the uh, origin's down here, so it's see how it's got that gap between the base and the origin, and that's how you get it elevated like that. 
Um, that's something to keep an eye on. Wherever the origin is, is going to be where it spawns from. So if we want to put the origin at the base of everything, we can change our view um, to orthographic just to make it a little bit easier to see. And then uh, what we can do is we can actually, um, in each of these, switch to vertex mode, select one of the base vertexes, or even two of them. F3 and cursor to, uh, let's see, snap cursor to selected, and that will put it um, in between whatever you've got selected. So we could select all four of the base points. Um, anyways, then what you can do is you can go to, um, we can go to, uh, that's right, it's in the actual object. So object um, and origin, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and that will put the origin wherever you've got your 3D cursor. So um, that's a really cool, really, really cool tip. Um, I'll switch back to transparent. If you don't switch to transparent view when you're trying to select things, you'll select, like look if I, uh, if I do that, it's only gonna select, oops, sorry. So I'm gonna select the front two vertexes, the one that is, ones that I can see. So um, let's go back, switch to transparent mode, select those guys and F3, uh, snap cursor to selected, jump out object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So I'll just do that for all these. All right, so I've done that now for all of them. So now if we come over back to our little uh, cityscape, uh, you should see that things are now, um, oh, let's get transparent view out. Things should be resting more on the plane as opposed to sticking out underneath it. Um, gosh, this sticking mouse button is driving me nuts. Uh, cool. That one's still floating a little. Oh no, it's not spaced is there because it's just a bit weird. All right. I think that's good. Now the next thing is, um, so we want to make sure, let's box select all these guys, grab them the Y axis just to drag them out of the way. And we're going to focus in here on this. And uh, this is our generator. We're going to uh, use that to generate all these different cool city tiles. Um, I feel like those towers are showing up way too much. So let's, uh, let's remedy that. We're going to select all these, shift select the tower, shift D, grab Y. Oops, we also had that selected, so I'm gonna delete that. Now we've got twice as many um, Okay, so one thing we can't do in Blender is we can't nest particle systems, it's particle systems. So I can't um, use this particle system and then you make this a particle to then generate it on our land. We actually have to do another step in between that where we turn this into a separate object. So uh, to do that, just make sure everything's moved off to the side again so you're not selecting it accidentally. I'm going to make sure I've got nothing selected. And I'll go to my gen uh, object. And what we're going to be doing is affecting our seed. So we'll change our seed a little bit till we find a shape that we like. And then what we can do is right up here in the little wrench icon, we can click convert. And what that does is uh, it doesn't get rid of our generator object. It's still there, but it creates all this other stuff. Uh, every single particle now is its own object. Now, one of the things to be careful about is that these objects are actually uh, connected to these objects. So in Blender, um, there's this thing called making links. You can make links between objects. And the gist is basically you can create two objects and link them together and anything you do to one will happen to the other one. So for example, if I was to create a cube and then duplicate it and now grab one of these vertices, it's not going to affect this cube. They're not linked. They're two separate objects. But if I click on shift click both of them and hit F3 and then type in make links. Or, um, there we go. Slip. Uh, link, uh, we're going to link data and uh, it's got all these different things we can link. We can link the modifiers, the instance collection, and we're just going to go object data. And so now if I affect one of these, you can see it's now affecting both. So they're now connected. And that can get you into trouble if you're not careful, you don't really think about it and you're not looking at both objects at the same time, you can end up making a lot of changes. So if you want to break the link between two objects um, like this so that you don't have you know, the, the mesh data 
being equivalent. Um, what you do is uh, you want to go to make single user. Um, so by making something a single user, you then select all the different things that apply. And now if I affect that, you can see it's not going to affect this one anymore. So that's how that works. So um, because we've we've generated, all of these have been created based directly off of these, they're still linked. So um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, see, it, it uh, it's affecting not just the ones in our particle system, but also the ones that we've, we've created. So if we go down to select our generator and grab it on the y-axis, drag it out of the way, you can see what I mean um, if I grab those vertices. So what that means now is if we merge all of these together into one object, which is what we're going to need to do, uh, it'll also merge um, these guys. One of these will be transformed into this, um, which we don't want. So we need to break those connections. So I'm just going to deselect everything, box select uh, all these objects that have just been created. So let's break links. So let's uh, let's go to what is it make single user selected objects and yep all well, that's fine now we should be able to shift select just these guys and hit f3 and join bingo all right so now it's a single object so this can be our first uh particle to put onto our main big uh landscape layer so let's grab it and i'm going to move it just out of the way again and uh, this one will grab and move back and let's create a different uh seed value so we get one that let's look, compare the two. Um, you can even we can even do things like have less objects. That's kind of cool. That gives us a nice small kind of low to the ground one. So let's try that. We'll go back up to here, convert, and then grab Y. We drag our particle system out of the way. We'll select. Make sure everything else is selected. We'll select our. Our new buildings have just been made, F3, and we're going to make single user again, selected objects, there we go, and then select them again, and F3 join. And we've got our next particle object. So we're just gonna turn these out. Don't need to make too many, I'm just gonna make a couple, just changing up my settings. Um, and looking for cool shapes that look, you know, markedly different. Um, another thing we can do to create variation is uh, to come over here and it's a simpler method than, you know, multiplying, you know, duplicating objects and stuff. We can also just use this use count feature that's underneath the collection. So if we click on use count, um, we can find individual bits. So let's say we want to, you know, decrease the number of towers. Let's figure out what's our tower called. It is uh, cube O2, very specific. Uh, I might rename that tower yeah, so that we can find it. Uh, and then let's go back down to that point. There it is, tower. So if I can go to zero, and now we're not going to have any towers in that one. Or, you know, I could go way up and spawn a bunch of them. So um, I might uh, I might do one without. So let's, let's see. Increase more of our objects. Cool. Now we got three, you know, distinct buildings, and uh, we might work with that for now. So, all this stuff, um, we can go ahead and hide. So we've got our individual buildings. We'll turn those off, and our city tiles. I'm going to move our generator to a. An, I'm going to create a new collection actually, and put our um, generator into that, and we'll call this uh, generator so we can find it nice and easy. So city tiles, we now have our four distinct city tiles. So now if we go back to our city base, we can hide city tiles and go back to city base, turn it on, jump back into our camera. Now we can make some magic by selecting the particle system, creating a new particle. We'll call this uh, city block emitter. And go down to, we'll, uh, we'll say no physics again, and uh, no, oh, it turns off velocity force. No, okay, no velocity. And faces, that's all fine for now. We wanna start on frame zero, finish on frame one. We'll turn our particles up. We'll try, we'll start with 2000. Oops, 2000, there we go. 
And then let's go down to render and select collection and our city tiles. There we go. Nice and very tiny. So what we can do now is increase the scale of all of these and until we get kind of the right height and then back up to the top here. And we're just going to increase the number until we fill out our, our scene. This is looking really sweet. Um, I'm going to turn off this selected view just so we can get a better sense of it. Now you can see the towers are completely taken over. Uh, let's go back down. So with count, we're going to use count. And let's turn off, I think it was the first and third one. Let's, let's turn them all off. And we're going to find the ones that don't have towers. So that one's got towers. And that one's not rendering, which is interesting. Okay, there's one without towers. That's one without towers as well. Okay, cool. So let's turn these up. And this one as well. So that we're just minimizing the number of towers we get. And there we go. Now our trench isn't really working out very well because we've got, you know, the, the things aren't spawning along the side. They're not angled correctly, um, but we can we can work on that. Um, but overall, I think this is a really good start. You can kind of see where this is going to go. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at what this would look like um, in a render. So if we switch um, cycles, actually we just do EV probably, and throw a light in our scene. Let's add a sunlight and give it a cool angle. Turn it up, make it super bright, and give it that kind of orange, hazy look. And you can see we don't even have any textures on these buildings yet, and things are looking pretty sweet. So this is uh, as far as we'll take it today. Um, but what we'll take on next is we'll start, um, you know, correcting things like the the canyon not really working, this this horrible looking bit, and uh, getting some materials on these particles and starting to build out that atmosphere so that we can really um, really have some fun with this super cool system that we've built. Um, find a cool angle and uh, really make it make it come alive. This is fun. This is so cool. Look at this. Maybe from the side. Do a little Death Star trench fly. That's how we should end this one. Oh, it's epic. Anyways, hope you learned something cool. Uh, learned a few things cool out of this tutorial. And uh, drop some questions and comments in the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to find out more as I continue to put these out. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm continuing to co just continue to make these. Thanks so much for the encouragement. Those of you taking the time to let me know you're enjoying these really means a lot to me. Um, I'm not planning on stopping this at all. So it's okay even if we've got just a few views and just a few likes. If you're really into this channel, don't worry if you don't see a lot of people engaging with it yet because I'm in this for the long haul and I know it's just gonna take a while to get a big audience. So right now I'm just happy to you know have the, the few people that we've got. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in the comments. Catch you later, bye. Yeah.